Hey, what's up guys? It's Zach with Fortunato Research and Development. Today we have in front of us Mark Brylow's uh, Evo 10 520 Series Club Racer coilovers. This is actually the original prototype set that we used when we were developing this product for the Evo 10, but he sent them back in for a rebuild, optioned them with longer stroke, added helper strings, and added these professional awesome 111 bump stops. Since we have these today, we're going to actually walk through the process of how to set up your bump travel and your ride height independently on a coilover setup that has helper springs. Properly setting your bump travel is a critical step in your car's performance and setup. This ensures that you can maximize your vehicle's suspension travel while avoiding your wheels contacting your fenders and causing an accident on track. So what is bump travel and droop travel? Well, bump travel is the distance your suspension moves from static ride height, when your car is sitting on the ground or driving on a flat road, and the suspension is at its equilibrium, at its ride height. When you hit a bump, the suspension travels up because the wheel has been upset, and that distance is your bump travel. The opposite direction is your droop travel, where if you hit a pothole, your wheel wants to travel down into that dip in the road, your suspension is extending back to its full length as the spring tries to force its way back to its, you know, its, its free length. Um, and that's your droop travel or extension travel, depending on your circle. So why would you want to adjust your bump travel? Well, let's say you're installing a set of Fortunato coilovers on your race car, and you're running a wheel and tire package that is significantly different than that which the car left the factory on. This is the rear shock from our WRX, and it is a fixed length from the lower mounting point to the bump stop landing. If you run a wheel and tire package that is significantly larger, or smaller than what the car came on, if you go larger, this is a set length. It might not be long enough to prevent the bump stop from engaging before your wheels smash into the fender. If you run a smaller wheel and tire package, you're missing out on space that you could be using for suspension travel. With a two-piece coilover design like Fortunato uses, instead of having to clip bump stop packers over the shaft of your shock, you can just lift and lower the height of the shock body in the lower mount. That'll effectively change when your bump stop engages and allow you to dial in your setup to exactly the wheel and tire package you are running. In order to adjust your bump travel and your ride height independently, your coilovers must be equipped with a helper spring. You see a helper spring here sitting below the main spring, and in most cases its primary purpose is to keep tension on the main spring even if you are running at a ride height where normally, if you didn't have the helper spring, your mainspring would just be clacking around in there. Um, the helper spring allows you to basically have this super soft spring, and as soon as you set your car down, this is going to become solid. What that's going to do is basically let you have this window of height adjustment where you can move the spring perch up and down without preloading the mainspring too much. That'll make sure that you're not affecting your car's handling balance or your corner weights too much while being able to adjust your ride height. If you were to try and set up your bump travel on a coilover that's adjustable with a single spring alone, you would be able to do it, but you might put yourself in a position where either your main spring becomes unloaded or you're over preloading your main spring to the point that you're affecting the car's handling balance. So to get started, we're going to take one front and one rear coilover and we'll remove the springs. For this set, we're gonna remove all the springs so that we can install our new Professional Awesome Bump Stops, which is what I'll be using to show you how to set bump travel. Everything that you see here you'll wanna have on your shock, whether it be a 500, 510, 520, or a Pro 2-Way. You wanna make sure that you've got your lower mount installed, Critically, you need your lower locking ring installed. You don't need the spring perch, but I'm just gonna leave it here just to avoid having to take it all the way off. And then you'll want to reinstall your upper spring perch radial bearing on this strut in this case, and reinstall the top hat. So we'll move on to the rear, same process. And these are the bump stops that we will typically include on your set. Um, like I said, you can follow along if you have these or if you have Professional Awesome or any others, it'll work just the same. Uh, 
in this case, I'm gonna leave our canister bracket on here loose. It's not going to get in the way like it would on the strut. So we're good to get started. Uh, next, we're just gonna wanna install this on the car, front and rear, just as you see it. Uh, no springs, just put it on the car uh, with your car in the air, making sure that all four wheels are off the ground. So we've got the shocks here on the car. As you can see, they're installed as they would be for driving, but there's no springs, so don't drive on them like this. What we'll do here is make sure that our lower locking collar is loose so we can turn it, and that will allow us to thread the shock body up and down in the lower mount, either raising or lowering the bump stop landing depending on how the tire fitment looks. So what you're gonna to wanna to do now is once your car is supported in the air, all four wheels off the ground, you have your shock on with no springs, go ahead and throw a wheel back on. We're not gonna put a ton of load on it so we don't need to get it all torqued down to spec, just enough that it's not gonna come off when you're jacking it up. So once you have your wheel back installed, uh, get a jack or an auxiliary jack like this to lift up the wheel with the shock without a spring. So what we're gonna do now is just keep an eye on the position of the bump stop landing up here while we lift up the wheel. So as we look in here, we see that the bump stop is getting close to engaging, but we're also getting really close to the edge of the fender here. Now, this might be an issue with how we threw the shock back in for this setup. When you do it, make sure that you set the knuckle camber adjuster bolt at the position it will be when you're driving. So we're getting close. It looks like the bump stop is just about to start engaging, but it hasn't engaged yet. Now, if you look here, we only have about a quarter inch, maybe a little less before the edge of this tire is gonna contact the fender. So what we'll do now is lower the wheel back down. But what we're gonna do is we're just gonna reach in here and we're gonna rotate the shock body counterclockwise from the top. What that's gonna do is going to thread the shock body out of the lower mount and effectively raise the bump stop landing so that that bump stop engages a little bit earlier. We're just gonna jack up the wheel again, see where we fall. Once you get your bump travel, basically the maximum allowable wheel position to where you want it, and you have moved the shock body up in the lower mount, so that the bump stop is engaging where you want it. Now you have to look for uh, the little wiggle, which is when this corner of the car starts to unload from your jack stand or the lift arm. We're gonna go very slowly here and keep an eye on our lift pad just to make sure that we don't upset the car. <laughs> yep, and I heard it. So once you hear that little, like a little pop of this rubber piece on the lift arm, uh, that's when you know that the weight of the car is now pretty much completely supported by that bump stop landing and your wheel's not going to move any further upwards in the wheel well. So now what we can do is we can lower this back down. So once you've got your bump travel or your bump stop height set, you can lock this locking ring in place here using one of the provided spanners. And then secure the locking ring using the four male Allen key. Once that's done, this is your front uh, bump height effectively. So take note of this measurement so that you can transpose it onto the other shot. If I look at this straight on, it looks like that is just about 200 millimeters from that flat to the bump stop height or the bump, the bump stop landing. So now what we can do is we can go to the bench. I'm actually going to uh, remove the top hat and spring from the shock so I can put our other bump stop back on. This will also make it easier to show that measurement. I use a T-handle, which makes this tricky, but we do provide uh, small Allen keys with your coilover kit, and that reaches in there just fine so that you can lock that in place. Just 
gonna put the spring perch back up, make sure nothing is loose. And right here will be where we can get started to set our ride height once we have finished setting bump travel on the rear. Now you're done. You should have your bump travel set up now. All your springs are back on your shocks and all your shocks are back on your car. Now you can lower the car and set your ride height up by raising or lowering the spring perch to get the height where you want it. Once you've got your ride height where you want it, don't forget to get an alignment. If you have any questions or concerns, please feel free to reach out to us via email or give us a call. As always, thanks for watching.